Last time we used stats to get the advantage. This time it's the heat map, baby. What's up everyone, how's it going? So last time we hit the in-match management with stats. Today we're going to use the heat map. These are the two main things I think I use in match to try and change the outcome of matches and the way my team are playing, the way the opposition are playing, all sorts you can do. Now for this, we're again going to use the Tato skin by Wazzy. So if you really want that skin, the link is down below. So if you type in the comments, what's your skin? I'm not going to reply to you because the whole video is kind of about the skin and it's in the description. So you can either read it or just listen. And the main positive of this skin is the match day screen. If you're a data geek like I am and you really look at them things and see how it can affect your match, this is an absolute beauty. Match day screen is here. You can see it's absolutely loaded. You can customize it however you want. You can change things like this. You can drop it down to whatever you want. There's all sorts you can do. And across the top there, you've got a load of different things as well. And this is where we come in. Remember last time we were looking at the player stats down there. This time we're going to concentrate on the heat map, look, there's six seconds gone, so we won't look into it yet. We'll give it like 20, 30 minutes, and we'll come back to this screen. So there's 25 minutes gone, and we're 1-0 up. All's going pretty damn well so far, and the heat map shows how aggressive we are being, and it also shows how defensive your opposition are being as well. So if we take a look at ourselves first, this fella here is Garvedal, playing as a wingback today. You can see his average position is really high up. He's, he's way up there, isn't he? Consider his two centre-backs there. He's there, so I'm quite happy with that. It means we're pushing on. Now, what I'm looking for is to affect games. Is my striker isolated? Because remember, I'm playing one up front in a 4-3-3, and he's on attack duty, so he's going to be naturally higher up. So what I'm looking for is, are the guys in behind him, these four, are they getting close enough? At the minute, that looks okay to me. If they weren't getting close enough, that's when I could consider this change. So using that heat map, if I think the striker is too isolated on that attack duty in a system like this, I've got a few options, haven't I? I can simply drop him back into a more deeper role. You can see he just drops back there. Or if I'm happy in the role he's playing and pressing forward, instead of being on attack, I can drop him back to support. He'll naturally come a bit deeper. Now, if I don't want to change that, if I'm really happy with the way he's playing, for example, in this match, Silva has scored the goal. So I don't really want to change that. But I still want the players to get a bit closer to him. It's these players in and around him. Namely these four. I've both got them on attack already. So they are advanced. But maybe I need one of them in a more advanced starter position. So I could possibly move Sozobol there up into that area. So he's already naturally closer to the striker. These are the options I've got with that striker using that heat map. But for now, I'm happy. They've laid out the way I want them to be. And if I look at Stuttgart on the other side there, you can see how deep their back five are. They're playing wing backs. I've really notched them back and they've also their two central midfielders are way back as well so i look at that i know that i'm pushing them back they're not providing much of a threat to us so if we're not winning and they're that deep maybe i have the option of pushing that defensive line up because look they've only got this lad here and look where his average position is in the center circle so i've got the option then of going to my team instructions going to out of possession and pushing a bit higher to put them under even more pressure and we're going to do that for this little experiment for this match. Okay, midway through the second half now, and you can see the change that's happened using the heat map. What I've noticed is, is that Stuttgart are trying to push up a bit more. You can see they're not as deep as they were. The wingbacks are getting a little bit higher. They're still pretty isolated there, the striker. They're not getting too far advanced, so I'm happy to keep my defensive line. I just need to keep an eye on their wingbacks now, because it looks like they're starting to bomb a bit further forward. We might have a bit more room in behind, so perhaps, in this case, passing to space will come into play a bit more and I can possibly focus player down either flank. Now if I'm going to do that, I've got the option of changing roles for the winger for example. At the minute he's an inverted winger meaning he's going to go in there. I could ask him to touch, hug the touch line as a winger. These are the options that you can look for by judging the heat map. In the first half remember 24 and 15 were in line pretty much with the centre backs because they're chasing a goal now the 1-0 down with 25 minutes left. That's the position they find themselves. So they're pushing on a bit more. So it's all about how can we take advantage of that or on the flip side, defend against it. So like I said, if I want to take advantage of it in an attacking sense, I could ask Forsberg to flip to a winger because then I know he's going to be further out there. Possibly even add a Mazala in there to go into the pockets in these gaps there where they're going to have a gap because the wingbacks are pushing on a bit more. Flip reverse it, if I'm wanting to hold on to a lead, then I know they're going to be pushing down the flanks. Maybe I'll drop these boys back to give the fullbacks a bit more defensive cover. And we can 
tweak a few roles. Instead of Garvidal being a wing back, we can drop him back to full back just so he maintains a bit of a deeper line so we're not too exposed. So these are the options you've got judging from average player positions on that heat map. That's why I like to check it every 10 minutes or so because you can kind of see the way the game's going, especially at half time. Like our opponents are chasing the game now, so you can see they're just creeping forward a bit now, so I need to be aware of that. Maybe I change our mentality to back off a little bit. On the flip side, if we're chasing a goal, maybe it's a way around. Maybe they're going to start dropping deep. We need to have a look at that. Now then, if you really want to get granular, you can. You can take it a stage further. That'll give you a snapshot of the heat map, the average positions, but you can take it a little step further if you like. If we go up here and press this, this screen will come up. So you've got the starting formations of both teams. Go up to analysis. We'll drop it down to teams. Then you're going to get this screen here. This is a new video all by itself, but for now, we'll carry on. Now, down here, you can see average positions. We'll click that, and you can see positions with ball, without ball, and overall. Select your own team first. Let's have a little look. So this is what we're doing with the football. When we've got the ball, that's basically where the boys are on the pitch. Remember, if you've made any subs, to drop it down to start 11, and that'll take it away. You haven't suddenly got 12, 13 players. And you can see, when we've got the ball, left wing back is high up, right wing back is high up. The holding midfielder is doing his job well. And to be honest, my two attacking midfielders are supporting the main striker quite well. If anything, Andre Silva might be a little too withdrawn, so I could maybe think about bumping him up to an advanced forward. But at the minute, I'm quite happy with that. Then we can have a look at without the ball. So this is us without the ball, and you can see we're nicely in our shape. I'm quite happy. Maybe if we are defending a lead, I could ask Garvidal to drop back a bit, and that would involve him becoming a fullback on support like the right back rather than a wing back. You can see the difference there. That's a full back on support and that's a wing back on support. So ever so slightly, he's higher up the pitch. You can see he's very close to the halfway line, whereas the right back is more in line with the centre backs. And you can also see the difference between the inverted winger, number 10, and the out and out winger, number 9. So there's the differences. If you want to cover the wide areas a bit more, you'll, you'll flip him to a winger or defensive winger so he'll cover that area a bit more. And the last button is average position overall, which is pretty similar to the heat map you are looking at on the match day screen so there it is match day overall pretty much expected how i want them lined up i'm quite happy but the two main ones are to look at our possession with the ball are they doing what you want are they getting high enough of the pitch and without the ball are they defending like you want them to and are there any gaps you can shift them over to for me with the last eight minutes i'm going to move forsberg to a winger so he's more in that gap there i'm going to drop one of the central midfields on attack to be more of a support role so he's going to be closer to the halfway line there we go, I've just slotted those changes in. So we should be a bit more solid now in defensive work. I'm going to change the mentality as well because obviously there's only nine minutes left. And as we play on Stuttgart, I've had seven shots. They've been stuck on that since we made the change. So that tells me that the solid little changes we've made have just sealed the game up. An actual fact, we've actually caught them on the counter-attack and took a second. So it's worked absolutely ideally. A nice 2-0 win. So that was a little tweaks using the heat map done in game. And you can see that you can use it as an overview. And it'll give you a good idea or you can really go into detail if you're struggling in a match or you just need to make a big decision you can take it that little step further hope that helps let me know down below if you want anything else covered take care and i'll see you soon Lemonade would be just right.